Okay, uh, welcome, good evening. This is a special board meeting of uh, Tuesday, September the 23rd, 2014. Uh, to ask everyone to rise for the invocation. I'll ask Alderman Barnhill to offer the invocation and follow the invocation. I, I'll lead you in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Would you bow, please? <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we come to you today, thank you for this day and for all the many blessings that we observe here in this community. We know and recognize that we are truly a blessed nation. We give you thanks for these. We ask that you be with each of us tonight as all of them, as the elected officials for the city of Franklin. Give us spiritual wisdom and guidance as we make decisions that direct the, that give the direction for the city. In Christ's name we pray, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May be seated. Uh, next is item four on the agenda is an opportunity for citizens to uh, make comments, uh, air grievances on issues that are not on the agenda. So if anyone wants to speak to this body, you, this is an opportunity. I don't see anyone coming, so we'll move on to uh, number five. I don't see anyone from the county commission, uh, or I don't see Mayor Anderson either one, so we'll move on to number six, which is approval of minutes of September the 9th, 2014 work session, and September the 9th, 2014 Board of Mayor and Alderman. Move for approval. Appropriate Second. motion, seconded by Alderman Berger. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Passes unanimously. I'm going to move down to the podium. And does anyone have a miscellaneous report while I'm moving down there? If not, I've got all the reports. Good. Well, I do want to add, offer one quick miscellaneous report. Uh, our mayor gets to recognize lots of folks uh, as, at the opening of a meeting. Different people are doing great things in the community. He doesn't always get to recognize himself. And I get to do that for him tonight. Uh, this last week, uh, Mayor Moore was recognized by the Greater Nashville sure. Regional Council with an award uh, called the Hank Thompson Award, which is given to an outstanding individual in our region who has exemplified personal and political integrity. So that represents the kind of leadership our mayor has provided to our city and also within our region as chair of the, the council mayors and, and the other work he's done. So let's uh, recognize our mayor for his experience. Thank you. Uh, I'm having a good time with what I'm doing and I'm, I was honored to receive it. But I have an even better news in that at the same meeting, we received the Marshall Stewart Memorial Award for Intergovernmental Cooperation. Uh, and this was presented to not only Franklin, but all the cities in Williamson County and also Williamson County to, to uh, recognize that we do have a great working relationship. And as I meet with other mayors from other counties and other cities, that's not necessarily true across the board. So we, we're very blessed to have a great relationship. And, that doesn't mean we agree on everything, <laughs> but it means that we are able to talk and uh, work through issues and problems on a regular basis. So um, next is uh, a proclamation. Uh, so whereas the city of Franklin is committed to ensuring the safety and security of all those living and visiting in Franklin, and Rocky, please come up. This is about, and whereas fire is a serious public safety concern both locally and nationally and homes are the locations where people are at greatest risk from fire whereas home fire killed more than 2300 people in the United States in 2012 according to the National National Fire Protection Association and fire departments in the United States responded to 365,000 home fires whereas working smoke alarms cut the risk of dying in a reported home fires in half excuse me, in half, whereas Franklin's residents should install smoke alarms in every sleeping room outside each separate sleeping area and on every level of the home, whereas Franklin's residents who have planned and practiced a home fire escape plan are more prepared and will therefore be more likely to survive a fire, whereas the 2014 Fire Prevention Week theme, Working Smoke Alarms Save Lives, test yours every month 
effectively serves to remind us that we need working smoke alarms to give us the time to get out safely. And therefore, I, Dr. Ken Moore, Mayor Franklin, do proclaim the month of October as Fire Prevention Month. So thanks for what you do to keep our city safe. Thank Ryan. you, Mayor. Uh, next is a, uh, I do have a miscellaneous report here in the, that uh, the 8th Annual City of Franklin Parks Department will be hosting Family Day Celebration at Harlansdale on October the 4th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, there will be a lot of new attractions this year uh, and opportunities for a family to interact and there will also be an opportunity for families to bring food for uh, uh, Grace Works. Uh, we just received notification today that Quintavious Johnson will be performing at Family Day at the park in Harlansdale mm -hmm. at 1245 and I'm honored to also proclaim that day to be Quintavious Johnson mm -hmm. Day in Franklin. Uh, for those that don't know Quintavious, uh, he uh, was one of the finalists or one, one of six finalists and America's Got Talent. We were all disappointed he didn't come in number one, but in our hearts he was number one, and I think the audience heart also indicated he was number one in there. So that's gonna be a special day for our city and a special day for your families going forward. And then uh, next, I would like to uh, recognize Leah Fitzpa uh, Fitzpatrick. Leah is from Germany. She was from the Albert Einstein School, and she's here with a group of uh, exchange students. And I asked Leah just a moment ago if she would take the opportunity to introduce them to the audience, the citizens that are on TV, and also our board. Okay. Hello. Hello. Sure. <laughs> And as she introduces you, you can wrap around. How's that? Okay. Yeah. Not as tall as you. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I'd like to thank you for letting us have this opportunity at this meeting, uh, this meeting to introduce ourselves and to thank everyone for the warm welcome we've received here in Tennessee, especially by Mayor Moore. We had a wonderful breakfast organized by Eric and uh, especially the sister uh, sister cities committee that have made this possible. Um, first of all, the visit of the Americans in Germany at the end of May, uh, beginning of June, we had a fantastic time and good weather. And now for our return uh, visit, the uh, group here in Franklin have kindly enough organized great weather too, <laughs> which helps. Um, but it is a wonderful opportunity for our students to get to know people and culture and although it is an English-speaking country, it is yet quite different from anything they've experienced in Europe. For some of them, it's actually the first visit to the United States, so this is very exciting. And Franklin, so far, as far as I can tell, has made a great impression on, uh, upon them. I, myself, am very impressed by the city of Franklin. I'm a keen runner, and I've already uh, run for two of the parks, Pinkerton Park and, <coughs> excuse me, Jim Warren. And I'm very impressed at how neat everything is, how tidy, how spacious, and how everything's catered for. If I feel thirsty, I just run to the drinks fountain. <laughs> and hey, you have red birds here in the trees. That's something oh. I, can, I can definitely say we haven't got at home. So really, thank you very much for having us, for welcoming us, and we look forward to the rest of our stay here in Franklin. And the kids, I'm going to introduce them, and they're going to give you an impression of what they've seen and done so far here in Franklin. And um, well, you can get an impression of what they, what sort of people they're like. So first of all, next is Luca. Luca is oh boy. <laughs> Hello and good evening. Um, first of all, I would like to thank you all for giving us this opportunity um, because we're all having a great time with our host families. And uh, I would just like to thank you all for making this ex student exchange possible um, be because we've seen so many things that we really liked and many things that were really different from Germany, but um, were really pleasant surprises. And next is Marcel. Um, hello. Um, I wanted to, uh, to thank you too. And um, we all enjoyed the trips and 
personally, I love the music here and <laughs> the people, and I think we all enjoyed it and still enjoy it. And um, thank you. Um, the thing that I noticed about Franklin is the people are really nice and whenever you need help, there's someone to help you. And I think that's something that makes the city special. So, thank you. Next is Colin. Yeah, Colin. Hello. So, <laughs> here in America, we made lots of new experience. For example, on Friday, we had our for first football game. <laughs> we watched it. So that was pretty cool, and we all enjoyed it. <laughs> so Centennial get a big win. Too. I think the homecoming was a bit of a surprise mm -hmm. for us as well, because it was quite a big event, and some of the kids got to actually ride on some of the floats, uh, which was quite an experience, yeah. OK, Ben's next. Good evening. Um, I really love your community, and everybody's a part of it, and I'm looking forward to see more of America. I really like it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Next, Sophia. Yeah, um, good ev evening and thank you. Really thank you for everything. It's so nice here and we love that city. We love your invitation to that beautiful city and we really look forward to have some more exchange students next year in Germany. Thank you. Um, really quick, my name is Julie Linton. I was here uh, last time talking to you about um, how excited we were for them to be here. And once again, we are so grateful for you guys, for also for Sister Cities and for um, the Albert Einstein School for making all of this possible. I'm so glad to be a part of it. Williamson County Schools is, is extremely overwhelmed, as well as BGA, um, to be a wonderful part of this experience. And, and they had a great time at Centennial. I look forward to hearing their stories from BGA and their um, host schools tomorrow. So thank you again. Oh. One last thing, we're missing a couple of Americans. They had a lot of homework to do tonight. All those AP courses are killing. Mayor, you. Mayor, <laughs> I have a question. At what age do you begin to learn English in school? Sophia, would you like to answer that? Yeah. Um, well, we start learning English at the elementary school with eight, I think, but that's not really English, so you're just learning colors, animals, and the numbers. And um, then we start with 11, at 11 or 12 at the middle school. Mm. Had to check off my notes. Okay, yeah, now we um, we'll go to the consent agenda. <laughs> All items under the consent agenda are deemed to be non-controversial and routine in nature by the governing body. Uh, they will be approved as recommended by committee or staff by one motion of the governing body tonight. We're considering items number 18 through 26. M move for approval. Second. I will second with the with the um, item 26. The second that bullet does not have a dollar amount, and I'm not sure mm -hmm. if that was a 16. typo. 26, 26, the second yeah. bullet, yeah. Uh, the TriStar Energy. So let's just pull that and see if, Eric, if you indeed, did we spend money or was I that I don't a, have an exact, I don't have something on that. I too. noticed that. You see what I'm saying? It, was it might have been in kind because it was for a, at the, um, Is that the Ag Center? Ag Center yeah. doing our disaster with yeah, the bridge. I'm, let me verify okay. if that is a cost associated with I just it. Maybe a, a no-cost agreement, but I'm, I'm not entirely sure. On that. Will you accept yeah. uh, pulling 26 yes. and? Yes. 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 Okay. So, uh, any other discussion? Seeing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Passes unanimously. Mm -hmm. Item number 10. This is a public hearing. Consideration of a draft resolution and plan of services and consideration of annexing approximately 11 acres of property located south of Murfreesboro Road and west of Ridgeway Drive, so-called Adams property. Would anyone like to speak to this body? Seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed. Is there a motion? Yes, move for approval. Second. Appropriate motion, seconded by Alderman Bransford. Uh, comments? 
I just wanted garbage collection is not in here as one of the services that will be provided. It would be provided to that. I area. thought so, but it mm -hmm. just wasn't named. Mm -hmm. Yes. It, it just could, just to comment, what's under consideration is a motion to move this into the annexation review zoning and development plan process. So you're you're sending it into our our planning and development process to come back out with specific. Uh, decisions to may, be made down the line about the annexation itself, the zoning, and the development plan. So, just want to clarify what's being considered tonight. Alderman Martin. Uh, after attending the neighborhood meeting for this last week, uh, I had these feelings. The, the neighborhoods bordering this development are very happy with their one acre lots and being in the county. Why should the city come in and annex this very appro approximate land and add a new concept? Maybe if the lots were an acre, it would be more palatable. Or maybe the applicant would prefer finding a piece of land where the character of the surrounding neighborhood would not be changed. The development is beautiful, but I believe this is not the appropriate location for it. Was that your comment or was that a... Uh, That's my comment. Okay, thank you. I want to make sure it wasn't a letter. Other comments? Sure. Oh, I was at that meeting as well. And, um, you know, our developments are pretty dense these days. They're, they're quite dense, zero lot lines. We don't have... And I've, you know, you've heard me all say before, Gee, I wish a developer would come along and just give somebody a little bit more yard in the back for the kids rather than having all these pocket parks. And, you know, pocket parks are great and some of the density is great, but it just seems we have so much of that. And here's a developer that comes along and wants to give somebody a little bit more backyard. And the price of the houses are equivalent, if not more, than what's next to them. The other thing is, it's right on Murfreesboro Road. It's right there near sewer uh, for the infrastructure. The infrastructure is already in. And it's not like it's being, uh, someone's coming in there to put townhomes in there or uh, a dense development. So I, um, I like this idea that we're gonna get a little bit more yard for some people. Uh, when they want that, they have to buy homes that have been around for quite a while. It's hard to find a new development, a new home. We've got a little bit more yard. So I'm very pleased that we have a developer that wants to come in here and do a fine job. And, and the houses are pretty pricey, you know. Um, but uh, that goes along with the neighboring subdivision there. So it really should enhance their property. It's in our UGB. Um, we don't really want to see that developed with more septic. And sewer is right there, so I'm definitely going to be supporting this. Vice Mayor? I also attended the uh, <coughs> neighborhood meeting, and it did bring to mind that we are now seeing in, in recent times uh, developments <coughs> that are proposed in the middle of existing developments. And, and that is a bit different from what we've seen many times and um, <clears throat> I, I am beginning to see there is a concern not just with this but with some others that the density is a lot higher in the proposed developments that are coming in and again they may be as this one is surrounded on two sides by already with, with existing development and <clears throat> it, it is I think it is something that we need to look at to think about <clears throat> fitting in to, or, or maybe perhaps I should say fitting a little bit better into a situation when there are already existing uh, developments there. Well, I'd like to clarify one thing. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> and I, I hear your points, Ann. Uh, but the other thing is this development although it comes in Ridgeway Drive, and there's homes in the front there and in the back and to the side. This development also is at the front of Murfreesboro Road, right on the corner of Murfreesboro Road, with some landscaping in between, so there's a, quite a bit of a buffer there. 
but it's not like there's a development here and development here and you're sandwiching in between. It is up front by Murfreesboro Road as well. So I just wanted to clarify that. But there, there is already <coughs> development, as you say, on the road and also immediately next, immediately adjoining it. Not up here, not on the road. Oh, not, I'm sorry. No. I, I should say. It, it fronts Murfreesboro Road. It does, but I'm saying they're already developed on that very same road that they are planning to use as their entrance and backing up to them is uh, Cross Creek. Correct, but what I'm saying too about the Murfreesboro Road, so when you come in here, they don't pass any homes. Their, their, their um, street, I don't think it's named yet, their street mm -hmm. that comes into the development does not pass any existing homes. Mm -hmm. So, thanks. Other comments? Ready to vote? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Passes seven to <clears> one. <throat> Uh, item number 11, this is a public hearing, consideration ordinance 2014-16, an ordinance to annex a portion of the <coughs> Ingraham property consisting of 61.01 acres located at the property at 4101 Clovercroft Road. Does anyone want to speak to this body? Seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed. Entertain a motion. Second. Appropriate motion second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Passes unanimously. Item number 12, this is a public hearing. Consideration of Ordinance 2014-17, an ordinance to zone 61.01 acres specific development residential for a portion for the property located at 4101 Clovercroft Road, Taproot Hills PUD subdivision. Does anyone want to speak to this body? <coughs> Seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed. Is there a motion? I move for approval. Second. Appropriate motion, second Alderman Bransford. Any discussion? Just, Alderman Peterson, Vice just, Mayor. Just another comment. Uh, this also is will be um, immediately adjacent to an already developed <coughs> uh, subdivision. And again, if you're looking, I guess, north of this, then the the areas that are already developed are approximately the same density. But if you look south, as I say, and, and around it in some other areas, although really it's just <coughs> immediately south, uh, they, are, they are much less dense. Uh, the, the other concern that I have is that this will be connecting to uh, a road that is already there, and there has been concern, concern expressed by the, the existing neighborhood that it will, there will be traffic through them. And as I say, as I've said before, there's another similar road where those people that have to be passed through are definitely making sure that it's not going to be, I think is what they stated here, a minor collector. You, you, would, not, you would not find that because they have stop signs on it and um, I mean, three or four way stops and they also have <coughs> speed humps on it. So it's not necessarily going to be much collect a, a very it's not going to serve as a collector even though our street is going to connect with their street. if they if they desire to go the way the the street immediately i guess west of them does <coughs> any other discussion hmm. seeing none ready to vote hmm. all in favor say aye. Aye. aye aye opposed no passes seven to one Item number 13, this is a public hearing, consideration resolution 2014-17, a resolution is amended adopting a plan of services for the annexation <coughs> of certain areas, uh, Ingraham property slash Taproot Farms PUD subdivision. Does anyone want to speak to this body? Seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed. Is there a motion? Move for approval. Appropriate motion. Second. Seconded by Alderman Barnhill. Discussion. Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Item number 14, this is a public hearing. Consideration of resolution 2014-41, a resolution approving a development plan for Taproot Hills PUD subdivision located on a portion of the property at 4101 Clovercroft Road. Does anyone want to speak to this body? Seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed. Is there a motion? Move for approval. Second. Appropriate motion, second by Alderman Bransford. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. 
item number 15, consideration <coughs> ordinance 2014-22, an ordinance to rezone 33.25 acres from Pacific Specific Development Variety District uh, to Specific Development Variety District um, with some numbers after it. <laughs> 14 bits. <density. laughs> Hmm. Uh, for the through the green PUD subdivision, is there a motion? I move for approval. Appropriate motion. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alderman Bransford. Open for discussion. Alderman Martin. Uh, I try to respond to all emails that I receive, but tonight I was unable to. Uh, for those who contacted me this afternoon late, uh, I heard I heard your wishes. I was not able to respond, but I will not support this on third reading. Other discussion? Alderman Skinner? Mr. Mayor, I know we discussed this at length at our last meeting. Uh, I just want to remind the other aldermen that <coughs> I experienced the traffic and the congestion on my catcher in Columbia every day, several times a day. I, I'm, I'm disappointed that the argument now is not will the traffic be worse than it is now, that it's just the possibility that it could be so much more worse. I know this property has been zoned for uh, commercial and retail since 2008. It is not built out. I can show you a number of places in South Franklin that also have vacant office buildings that have been there for quite a while. So for the applicant to use this as the reason that we should accept more traffic is unacceptable. And I ask you to vote no on this. Alderman Branchford. Mr. Mayor, um, any, let me see if I can be a little clearer than I was last time. Um, anything we built in Franklin, there's other things in the pipeline, right down the road here on Franklin Road, that's going to create additional traffic. Any anything that we use, anything we built in Franklin is going to put more cars on the road. So, at one, at what point do we try to balance? excessive versus minimum impact that's one scenario or we create a moratorium that nothing let me repeat that is built because everything we built here in Franklin is going to impact traffic every neighborhood could come to us and tell us how awful a certain new development or infill will create additional traffic. We have been charged with making the best decision. I've heard from people, friends, people who travel through Columbia Highway coming out of other cities complaining about not being able to get through our city because of traffic. So we have, a, we have some choices here. If we vote this down, then we may have to vote other things down that we may like better in a different location. I will stop right there. <laughs> I think I've made my point. Alderman Berger. <clears throat> well, I voted in 2006, I think it was, against um, the apartments out there originally. So I guess I voted against it before I voted for it. <laughs> and I did vote, um, or I, I, voted, I voted for it, rather, I'm sorry, I voted for it in 06 because I didn't think that was the place for it. And then, um, all right, I voted for it in 06, and then I voted against it because after it, the development didn't happen, I didn't think that was a really good place for it. 
So I was not on the I was not on the positive end of that. Since then, those apartments got built, and I took some time to go out there and look at those places and talk to the people. Spent some time talking to them. So I this was a hard thing for me because I I really didn't think it was still a good idea. I was amazed how nice that development was, and the wall, the sound wall in the back, and so I I'd spent the time talking to them. So. When this came up, I wanted to do my due diligence as well, so I did purposely try to talk to the commercial people and um, that are interested in this, this area. And this is going to be commercial. If, if this doesn't go in, it's going to be commercial. It's going to be commercial very quickly. And it's not going to be office. It's going to be commercial, probably some fast foods and possibly that car wash place if you can get it but especially the fast food and according to the traffic studies fast food you've got people going in there for breakfast lunch and dinner and you've got you got a you got some heavy traffic there with that um if this road was not in the near future now it's not 20 years out but it's in the near future and we're talking three four five years hopefully with this road then i would say you know but we can't prevent the commercial to go in there. They have a buy right zone now, and they can build to that tomorrow, and they will be building. We will see that within the next year to two years that will be there. So I, I, it comes down to this for me. After talking to the people out there and looking at the commercial, and I'm all about healthy businesses. I'm a small business owner. I've been for years, and that is very important to me to make sure that we help our businesses to be healthy and more residential there can feed into the to the Kroger and the target and the people over there now so i'm looking at the road going to be coming in there at some point in time in the near future and the highest and the best use for the residential not only in the long the short term but in the long term and when i consider all those things enhancing the commercial healthy businesses best and highest use short term long term new road coming in there eventually i have to go with the apartments i don't want to go with the commercial i don't think that is the right thing to do and we don't get a say in that they will come in and they will build that and if it's next year or two years that will be there we have a healthy economy right now locally and this is the time for these people to move on it they're not going to move on it in five years they're going to move on it now so I, I have to go, and I've heard everybody, and I understand what they're saying, but for the best and highest use, I have to go with the apartments. Alderman Barnhill. You, you, know, you know, I guess uh, you know we keep hearing the <clears throat> we keep hearing the argument that someone doesn't want more traffic on Columbia Avenue, and I guess that that's a good argument, but. The 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 reality of this particular item that's on this agenda tonight is not that option. That's not the third option. The third option is not to do nothing. The option is either the current zoning or the new zoning. And what we have to face, what we have to ask ourselves is which is the least uh, intrusive on traffic on Columbia Avenue. <clears throat> no one has disputed, and I, I've read emails, and they question them, but they haven't put out any facts or anything any, to dispute those traffic studies. But the least uh, traffic study, the least amount of traffic is from the apartments. So you're having less of a traffic impact by doing the rezoning than you are leaving it like it is. Now, if you think, and, and maybe some of us do, I do not, that you want to gamble that there's not going to be developed because in 2008 it was approved. If you remember what happened in 2008, you had a turn down in the economy. So therefore, there was a heck of a lot of stuff that wasn't being built in 2008. If you want to gamble with that, then you know you can vote however you want to vote. If you're voting for strictly the least uh, project that will impact the traffic on Columbia Avenue, it is the rezoning, and, and that's. And that's there. And, and again, I've asked the same thing at each of the meetings that we've had, and I've asked it the same thing at each of these meetings. Show me, tell me, someone mm -hmm. where the traffic study is wrong, where two traffic studies are wrong, where our traffic engineer is wrong, where their traffic engineer is wrong, 
And, I, you know, I'll listen to that. But so far, I simply haven't seen that, haven't heard that. And what I, what I heard the other night was, I, want what, I don't want to impact traffic. Well, you're going to impact traffic because you've got two choices. Either the way it is or the new zoning, and the new zoning is less traffic than the way it is. Vice Mayor. I'm just going to say I'm not going to be supporting it. Alderman McClendon. First, let me, uh, let me thank all the people that um, communicated their concerns and their wishes to me and to the other board members. Um, I, you know, it's, um, I, I jokingly say that nobody knows or cares who their alderman is until they have a pothole in front of their house. Um, but it is, I, I do give great weight to citizen comments particularly people who are stakeholders in the sense that they live in and around the area and work in and around the area. The fact that I don't cast my vote in conformity with what most of the comments I got was does not mean that I don't value your input. It simply means that I have a reasonable disagreement with, the, with your analysis or with the, with the, with the request that, that you made. It's not personal. And I'm not, I'm not telling you that you don't know or anything. I'm, I'm simply saying I've, I've looked at what the professionals who have um, who've rendered their work on this have had to say. Um, and I also use my own experience. I would say that, but I do appreciate the comments. I would say that there, there, some of the comments about this uh, proposal have um, have put forth arguments that go kind of like this. Well, if you allow apartments, that's new cars in the area. That's therefore more traffic. There's there's some validity to that, but the they then sometimes have said, whereas if you don't allow the apartments, then the only traffic is people that already live in the area, because no one would come here from anywhere else to go to anything that might be built there. Well, I disagree with, with that analysis for two reasons. One, I don't live on that side of town. I live in Fieldstone. And yet, I will frequently go to Coy or Chili's on Columbia Avenue. So I don't necessarily accept the idea that if you don't live in the area, you're not going to come there. It's, uh, so the apartments are a net gain. Uh, on, on cars compared to the commercial or retail. The second thing is that although retail and commercial developments do not bring bedrooms to the area, they do bring car trips to the area that might otherwise not have happened. And for that example, I would say, do you think that there are people who go out strictly to go to Chick-fil-A and then return wherever they came. And I think the obvious answer to that is it happens every day. Sure, some of those people are also going to Target and Publix or wherever else they're going, but, but not always. There are people who make trip-specific destination trips to Chick-fil-A as just one example. And so although Chick-fil-A didn't add any bedrooms, it clearly clearly added car trips to the area. Without doubt, it added car trips to the area. Again, I understand that a lot of people would only go to Chick-fil-A if they were already out doing some other errand. But I also believe that there are lots of people who go to Chick-fil-A and don't make any other trip. In other words, if you took Chick-fil-A Chick away, you would have fewer car trips in the area. So some of the citizen analysis I find some I find some flaws with again that is not to say I don't appreciate what you have to say it is not to say that I am indifferent to your plight some of the comments um, seem to suggest that uh, that members of this board don't get it we all live here every decision that we make tax rates water <coughs> river issues we all live here, so we're 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 not we're not 
governing you from afar. We're, we're part of the community too. I can promise you that if we took a vote about whether or not we want to solve the traffic problem on Columbia Avenue, the vote would be eight to zero to solve it. And in fact, we're putting our money in that direction. I'm gonna support this because I have credible engineering analysis that to me suggests that the, that the traffic mm -hmm. problem, which there undoubtedly is, could very well be made worse by saying no. Mm -hmm. But I'm also gonna support it because I believe that the solution here is not to say yes or no to one project or the other. The solution here is to get the road enhanced, mm -hmm. get some more asphalt out there. Um, you know, with enough asphalt, it wouldn't matter what we zoned it. Now, I'm not for that either, okay? I mean, we do have to balance the, the road, the costs, and how much asphalt you want against the uses that we permit. But um, I, I am committed to supporting improvements to our infrastructure, as well as to making what I believe to be long-term um, good decisions, not decisions that are right for this immediate moment or even for the next 12 months, but for the, for the long term. And I, I, I don't think I heard anyone say that they really wish all those apartments had never um, been done. Um, maybe I missed that, but, but I, I think that the that those apartments have offered, the ones that are there and the ones that may be permitted, have offered a much needed housing option for people who want to live and work in this community. Um, it is not acceptable to me to simply say, well, come back when you can afford the house that I live in. I don't, I don't, I don't think that's an acceptable position or policy to implement. <coughs> I have long advocated allowing the market to help us solve our, our housing issues. And so to many people, me included, you know, I own a home here. On the one hand, I could say, well, what's best for me? And that might be different than what's best for us. But when I cast my vote as an alderman, I have to try to vote for what's best for us. And I believe that supporting the infrastructure projects that we're going to do and allowing this rezoning are in the, in the big picture and in the long run what's best for us. Mm -hmm. Now, reasonable people can disagree with me. And if you do disagree with me, please be reasonable when you do so. <laughs> I'll, I'll be real brief. Alderman Skinner. I, I want to follow up on a couple of things. Um, Columbia Avenue is a state road. Yes, it'll be built with federal and state dollars. We heard from our engineer a couple of weeks ago that said if we had approval next month, the construction would not start for five years. We have not had approval of this. It's with federal and state money. It's up to that availability and that prioritization by the uh, by bodies other than this one. Uh, I don't think we're going to jump in and do another state road anytime soon. We're still working to finish Hillsborough. Uh, as, as much as I admire the people that do our traffic studies and so forth, often it is the most immediate intersection involved with the project. They don't study what ramifications there are for other uh, streets that are farther out. And that's what I'm asking you to consider tonight, is that I have seen the traffic grow and grow on these other major avenues. And almost 500 more units has got to add more traffic to those avenues. Uh, for clarification, I might point out that the uh, Columbia Avenue project that you're referring to is in the three-year funding plan. Mm -hmm. Uh, but there is some uh, concern with the lack of a transportation bill in Congress uh, that uh, transportation funding could uh, 
uh, be severely affected. So uh, if things, if the transportation bill moves within Congress, uh, then uh, it would continue to remain within the three-year funding plan and move forward. So any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. Uh, show of hands, all in favor. I see 5-4 opposed, 3 against, it passes, 5-3. Item number 16, consideration of resolution 2014-67, a resolution authorizing the City of Franklin, Tennessee Mayor and City Administrator to purchase lot 4300 as shown on the West Haven section 25 and section 15, lot 4001, final subdivision plat of record. Uh, is there a motion? Move for approval. Second. Appropriate motion second. Any discussion? Just Sing to clarify, the term purchase is used, but we expect it to be transferred to the city at no cost. Okay. Just want to clarify that. Acquire. 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 Yes. Acquire. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Item number 17, uh, consideration of uh, resolution 2014-62, a resolution awarding construction contract City of Franklin contract number 2014-0032 to Southeast Contractors Incorporated in the amount of $3,309,526 for the construction of the West Haven Fire Station 8. And yep. uh, there was a request yep. uh, earlier yep. that uh, yep. we yep. make yep. this yep. contingent yep. upon the completion of the... Right. Uh, the such moving. award would take yep. place upon the... Right. Uh, Acquisition of the property. Yes. I move for approval on condition of the acquisition of the property. Second. second. Appropriate motion is seconded by a multiple group of people. Yeah. I'll recognize the <laughs> vice mayor since she's to my left and I heard her better. So any discussion? Okay. Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Item number 26, uh, the, item, the uh, bullet point two was uh, concerning uh, actions on behalf of the Board of Mayor and Alderman by the City Administrator and acknowledge report of a contract award to TriStar Energy of Nashville in a total amount of, and no money is specified per month for a t term of renewal, renewable 60-day periods for rental of above-ground fuel dispensation tank equipment sited at Franklin Fire Station Number 7, temporarily located at the Williamson County Ag Expo facility. Mr. Mayor, I'm just going to yield to the administrator because this, this is normally not voting. It just, I would love for him to clarify it, for us. This is accurate. It is a no-cost contract, but it is a contract, so we put it on there. I know it's worded a little awkward in that way, but it, it was at no cost. But since the city was entering into a contract, we wanted to make you aware of it. That's right, so no votes no, necessary. Zero, zero, scared. Uh, <laughs> do we have any items to consider in executive session tonight? We do not. I, no, we do not. Oh, that's, okay, I look for a motion to uh, adjourn. So moved. Yeah. Second. Corporate motion second. All in favor say aye. Aye. aye.